I'm here at Botanical Gardens learning about the agave plant, which is not only a ubiquitous species, but it is also a very interesting plant. Come and I'll show you what I mean. Meet Levinx. Levinx is a gardener here at Botanical Gardens in the succulent collection. Here we have an agave ferroc, and this above it is, ag is a aloe. The way you tell the difference between the agave and the aloe is the agaves are usually thin in, in their leaves. They don't have a lot of meat inside of them or water or anything that actually holds water as far as high cells. Now with the aloe, you find the aloes are usually thicker. They have better medicinal purposes. They do have the same ragged sharpness as far as teeth or thorns on the edges, the same way with the agaves. But when you see the agaves, they both mostly come in different forms. If you have the agaves, Agave Augustin Paulina, which is another name for Agave Americanus, which is white and the light yellow, which means it's a variegated because it has two different colors. As you see on top of that one agave there, you have a long seed pod. That whole seed pod there is once that each individual seed at the very top opens up and forms a smaller version of the agave, once it gets to a certain point, the main agave itself will die. The, the shoot will fall down to the ground and everything will self-seed itself. Now self-seeding as in here, you'll see the small shoots here coming in. They grow anywhere. So they can find them under any leaf. And they're so easy as far as growing, you can actually just take one out and put it in the ground. Now it's time for fun facts. Agave nectar has been used for centuries as a folk remedy for its medical properties. The Aztecs mixed it with salt and used it for skin infections and wounds. This is what comes off the seed pods that you find on the agaves. They will look similar to that coming off the tree itself. It's as simple as leaving, leaving it here on the ground or as I've done with these ones here. Just as simple as clear away to the soil, take the shoot, cover it up, give about two or three weeks, then you have it like this, where it's firmly into the ground. This one's not as firm, but like I said, it's just as easy as clearing away, putting soil around it, a little bit of aggregate, which is what this gray rock is, aggregate, and that will continue to grow exactly like that. Most of them, like this one here, this one is just starting. It hasn't formed not one seed yet, and it's probably gonna grow about another two feet before it actually starts to seed. The one in the background, the seed part is actually dead, and all those seeds I have started to drop, which they will start looking like this. Once these open up, that's where you get your new agave from, in that style, but most of them are, like I said, they'll come up on these long shoots. Once the shoots get to the point where each seedling or a shoot that is ready, once that drops to the ground or they fall to the ground, everything after that becomes self-seeding where they'll just sit there and take off on their own. As you see here, these ones here have roots starting to come into them now. And for the, all I have to do is simply is just drop them. You might put them in leaf matter, um, compost, soil, dirt, aggregate, anywhere where there's soil underneath the roots will automatically go down because these can go about six to eight months without water with ease because they actually obtain and store their own water inside each leaf, i.e. the agaves carry more because the leaves are skinnier but they carry more to feed their, their um, seed stem compared to the aloes where the aloes just constantly drop, 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 drop leaves, drop leaves, drop leaves. As they drop leaves, the leaf hits the ground another one starts to form and they constantly form over and over and over. These are plants that will go longer than you live if you allow them to. They are very, they are not as invasive but they can become very invasive if you do not allow, if you do allow them to just grow wild instead of maintaining them or trying to cultivate them. Now it's time for fun facts. Most agave sweeteners are produced from the blue agave plant. The core of the plant contains agua miel, or honey water, the substance used in syrup and tequila. <laughs>